I had literally been contemplating on which direction I was going to go with this commentary all day long. Like, it's been a lot going on, you know, in the news this week. And I said, I need to find a way to make this video. And this had to be one of my edited style videos because there's no way I could do it quick style the way that I usually do it. Now, this tweet that you're looking at right now, and shout out to my, I would say, my little investigators. It's like I have my own little ops team who finds stuff for me to talk about and then i do my best to piece it together to make everything be as coherent as possible so shout out to them because there's no way i will go onto people's pages like this and just pull things but it's all going to come full circle by the end of this video it's all going to make sense so as we all know we know who left this tweet that is none other than candace owens and that woman is about as much as a trickster and a traitor as they come. That like fence straddling out of her ass. But anyway, this is a tweet that she left a few about a few months ago where she was talking about Taylor Swift. And as many of you know, I do not like Taylor Swift at all. I do not like her at all because she, like Candace Owens, is an opportunist. So it's like they are basically working hand in hand with each other. But I decided to post that up because, well, she literally contradicts everything that she did in this tweet with what she just did on Friday. So she says on the heels of Taylor Swift 13 at, eight, at Taylor Swift 13, feeling the need to, as all Hollywood elitists do, use black people and minorities as pawns to brainwash people into doing their bidding, I would like to come out to Tennessee and campaign for at Marsha Blackburn. And if y'all don't know, Marsha Blackburn is a white woman. But of course, that wouldn't be a surprise to any because that's whose ass she tends to kiss quite a bit nowadays. But I, I said that to mention this part right here. This is a tweet that many people were able to retrieve from Candace Owens' page. And she says, I'm going to go ahead and state that there is a 0% chance that these suspicious packages were sent out by conservatives. The only thing suspicious about these packages is their timing. Caravans, fake bomb threats, these leftists are going all out. Now, she's talking about Caesar Sayak Jr., who was the guy who left these uh, makeshift bombs uh, planted all over the establishment, even though I truly believe he was not working alone. There's no way in my heart and in my brain that this guy was able to act alone, but this is who they have. And she claims that this is all a distraction, like many of them are saying. She's basically parroting the things that many of them have always parroted when it comes to stuff like this. They blame the media because, you know, that's all they know how to do and things of that nature. But this was very real. This actually did happen. Candace. Now, the reason why I say that she pretty much made herself look like an idiot is because she said in that previous tweet that people that black people are going to go all out and do. And I'm not sorry, not, not that not black people, but uh, certain Hollywood elitists will go all out to try and sway black people to do this, that and the third. Yet, Candace, you put together or were a huge part of of this young black leadership even though i would never ever dare call them young you know black leaders not leaders of me and i specified that in another video you would never hear me say that any of those people especially someone like you is a black leader or a thought leader or any kind of leader for that matter more your parent you will you are that you are definitely a puppet i will say that and Weren't you doing the exact same thing? You did this, and she basically said that it, all of this is happening before the elections. Candace, this happened on Friday, the same day as that event that you helped orchestrate and put together in D.C. to meet with 45. All in there wearing that daggone Make America Great Again hat, might I add. And the election is on November 6th. So almost two weeks before the election so you basically contradicted yourself and the reason another main reason i'm bringing this up is because she deleted the tweet that you're looking at right now because people called her out on her stuff and she knows she was dead wrong 
She didn't realize it until people called her out on it. She realized, oh, I made a slip. Let me go ahead and delete this. But see, that's the thing. That's the beauty of the Internet. Stuff really never, ever truly goes away. It usually sticks around. But you know what? There's actually more to this. And just watch this right here. Candace decided to double down and create this website called Blexit, which is basically black people leaving the Democratic Party and becoming conservatives and going over to the Republican side of the game. Listen, the Republicans and the Democrats are two are, are I'm sorry, are two feathers on the same bird. They're practically, you know, they practically make up that entire bird. But see, they don't see that. And they automatically think that every black person is a uh, Democrat or a liberal. And then they try to talk down on them and everything like that and use the white people's talking points and all kinds of stuff. And (laughs) I couldn't help but laugh at the slogan because it says we free. I read that as if a slave said this. And I don't mean to make it sound like that, but that's what it sounds like. It's it's almost like they're saying we's a free boss. We're done. And all of this. That's what it sounded like to me when I read that. And to make matters even worse, Candace must think that this is some kind of original thing. If my memory serves me correctly, Brexit, which was the British breaking away from their government, is what was first. This Blexit is literally mimicking that. So this doesn't even have an original title before behind it. They just like ch- they just took the R out and replaced it with an L. And then I was reading through some of the comments and someone said more Latinos should do this too. Um, I guess it was a Latino person who follows her and they should call it Lexit. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> like this is like out of control here. This is just unreal, but it's not surprising, nor is it shocking, but it really is disappointing. And it is very, very sad. And then I had also found out yesterday on, uh, I believe it was True Royal Family Channel, that they blocked black media from even coming to the event. They said that they actually gave them passes, but then it turned out that, you know, when they got to the door, they were turned away because basically they didn't want them asking questions like, you or, you know, doing something like, say, like I would do. Let's put it this way. A person like myself or Professor Black Truth or Jason Black, Tariq Nasheed and a few other people would not be invited to this event. Hell, to be honest, I wouldn't even look for my invite in the mail. I There's no way that I would want to be in the midst of all of that. It's bad enough that I live in close proximity with what with, with what happened, but I, in a way, mentally I was far away from it, just far away from it. And that's not all. I want y'all to stay tuned to see and listen to this next part. It actually has nothing to do with Candace, but I said, let me just kill two birds with one stone. We're 18 days away from the election. You said before, you don't vote. I don't. Why? Because I've never trusted a politician a day in my life. I don't believe in politics. I'm not a person that really believes in compromise. And, and politics is mostly about compromise. I, I'm not good at that. So how do so we I change? Don't trust, I don't trust. Nobody? That. Not in politics, no. I think it's a very dishonest profession. So all of them? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so y'all just heard that clip right, and saw that clip right there of Roland Martin interviewing Jason Fatlock. And as y'all know, that is one of the clones that I really don't like. You know, I don't like any of them, but it's some of them that just really rub me the wrong way. And he's definitely at the, damn near at the top of that list. But anyway, you saw right there where he was talking about politics and how he doesn't believe in voting and how he doesn't trust any politician. Yet here is a picture right here that I was able to find of him speaking at that young black so-called leadership convention, or as I call it, the Kuntocracy, on Friday. The one that Candace Owens helped orchestrate, talking about how black people, especially young black people, need to move away or create a or do a blexit as she calls it from the democratic party a liar and a hypocrite and probably someone who is probably near a diabetic coma any day now because of his poor diet this is the same man that has so much stuff to say about colin kaepernick for the last couple of years just because 
he's the same one that gets on his platform, just speaks a whole bunch of coontastic rhetoric every chance he gets. And, he up, and here he is sitting up there lying and talking about he doesn't believe in politics and he don't vote. But here he is being a quote-unquote guest speaker at this event that deals with politics. Like, how does that work? I swear, these individuals, we we know that as black people, we have to deal with our enemies. And we know who our enemies are outright. But the ones from within that look like us, they need to be dealt with first and foremost. Because what they're doing is the true oppressor is using the co-colonizer, as I like to call them, as a shield to protect them should something break out of, of us versus them. So it's like we would have to break down their shield and defense mechanism before we even touch them. And this is an old trick. They use this trick all the time. As a matter of fact, one of my subscribers had left a comment and they were talking about Reagan and did I hear about what happened with Reagan when he tried to do the same thing? And I said, no, I didn't hear about that because I wasn't even born yet. But they said basically they did the same exact thing. And in October of 1987, when the stock market crashed, people lost their jobs, they lost their homes, they lost their money. But guess what? When everything started to recover, guess who got those jobs first? When those jobs started to flood back in? White men. And as far as the quote unquote black yuppies, as the person who commented and left it, they were left ass out. They had to go back to whatever it is that they were doing before, you know, all of that happened. So they were literally back at ground zero. They didn't even hit square one. They went past that and went right back to ground zero. And I have a feeling this is exactly what's going to happen here. And to be honest, if it does, I feel absolutely nothing. Point blank, period. That is what they will get. It'll be what they deserve. And that'll be that. I, will, I and others will just continue to go on and continue to call this BS out as it should be called out. But that's all I really need to say right now. If there's anything else you would like to contribute, let me know down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. The links will be in the description. And I'll talk to you in the next one.